Hello, I'm Richard from MTCS and today I'd like to talk to you about competence. Um, I'd like to present you with another analogy to help us understand um, is somebody competent perhaps or, or not? Um, and it's actually to do with what we call the range of activities that must be completed to determine if somebody's competent. Okay, so going back to the driving a car analogy, um, in my earlier video we mentioned uh, about learning to drive at a driving school or perhaps with a family member and you, when you passed your driving test you were deemed competent and we said that you were consciously competent so you were, you were quite aware of your own sort of um, your, your shortfalls perhaps because you didn't have experience. Let's consider now somebody who had passed their driving test on a particular day and after that, they were going to use a car, their own car, to drive to and from work every day. Now, let's imagine that they drive the same car, they drive the same time every day, and they return home at the same time every day. If it's raining, they take the bus. If it's snowing, they won't drive. Again, they'll take the bus. They won't drive in the dark and they won't drive on motorways. They won't drive any other type of car. And they do that for say three years and they never have an accident. The question is, are they competent? Supposing you wanted to employ that person as a van driver or a delivery driver, would you class them as competent to do that? Well, yes and no, because they are competent because they've driven a car and they've never had an accident for three years. However, they're competent in the context of what they use that car for, and they can do that very well. What they're not is competent to drive a delivery van and to drive at night time and to drive on a motorway, for example. And that analogy works in lots of industries. For example, the industry, the offshore industry, there's roles there where people have to, they, they may be called, for example, an ROV pilot. And an ROV pilot um, could possibly pilot lots of different ROVs. There's many different varieties out there. There's many different projects. But what we tend to find is people are competent in the context of one specific vehicle or one specific ROV, and perhaps one specific project. So what do we do then if we want to move somebody from, from one type of system, perhaps one type of car, to another type of system? What would you do if you were that employer and you were employing that person who drove their car and you wanted to employ them as a van driver? Well, you'd have to give them specific training and you'd have to give them time to develop and learn under supervision to be able to drive that delivery van. And that's the same in the offshore industry. If you have somebody that's worked in a particular role on a particular piece of equipment, on a particular type of project, and they move into a slightly different role with different equipment, then they may have to possibly step down the role. They have to learn and develop their skills again, almost go through a probationary period. And it's very important that we do that, especially in a very transient industry like the offshore industry, because you know, we have to make best use of our people. But their learning and development path is absolutely critical to, main, to develop and maintain their competence. We'll be talking more about competence and how we assess it in, in future videos. I hope you've enjoyed this video and do feel free to contact MTCS if you've got any questions about what we do or what I've been talking about today. Our contact details are on our website or you can email us direct as well. Thank you.